We've got another emailed question from a subscriber today, and this question comes from a man named Terrence, and his email reads, Keith, do you think it's possible for people that are non-elect, not elect, to be able to repent? Is it possible for non-elect to be able to repent? Now, I pretty much already know what you are going to say, Keith, but hear me out on this. I think for man to be held accountable, he would have to have free will to choose God. If God didn't at least give man the ability to choose, wouldn't that just make God an evil dictator? So thank you, Terrence, for your email and question. Now, the reason that this question is an important question is because if you don't get this right, if you aren't able to understand and comprehend the assessment of God's sovereignty in light of man's depravity, then you are going to miss out on a lot. And a misunderstanding of this here is how people tend to go left very quickly. So the first question is, do I think it's possible for the non-elect to repent? Well, no, I do not. And why do I not believe that the lost can't repent or the non-elect can't repent? Well, because God in his sovereignty did not elect them for salvation. And because of that, he will not draw them to his son. John 6, 44. Now, the second thing you, you say is this. You say, I think for man to be held accountable, he would have to have free will to choose God. If God didn't at least give mankind the ability to choose, wouldn't that just make God an evil dictator? Now, I need you guys to pay close attention here because this is important. What you need to understand is that this story is not about you. Okay, Everything, everything, everything that exists, everything that has been created is about God, his gospel and his glory. When people say that for God to cast sinners into hell or for God to choose some and then condemn the rest, I immediately know that that person has an extremely low view of God and an exalted view of man. God has not done anyone wrong when he chooses to have mercy on some and for the rest to harden them and cast them into hell. God was right. He was always right. And he was just in the hating of Esau and he was just in the loving of Jacob. Now, why? Because he's the creator. He created them. Okay. He can do what he pleases with them. They're his creation. Now, let me paint a picture for you. We'll give you an illustration. Okay, imagine a young boy from the 50s when toy army men were very popular, right? The little green army men. Let's say for Christmas, okay, this young boy's dad bought him a box of 100 toy soldiers. And this boy is playing on the floor in his room, okay, the day after Christmas. Now, he picks out his 20 favorite toy soldiers. And the other 80 toy soldiers are the ones he hates. And he has, this little, he has these little battles on the floor with his 20 soldiers versus the 80 that he hates. And the 20, sometimes the 20 win and sometimes the 20 lose. Uh, those toys are his. He can do with them what he pleases in the same way that the potter can choose to cherish certain pots while crushing others. Jeremiah 18, 6, like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. The reason the sinner is held totally responsible on the day of judgment, even though they did not have the ability to choose God, because John 15 makes it clear that God has to choose us. It can't be the other way around. But the reason that sinners who died in their sins are held responsible is because they really did love their sin and they really did hate God. They really hated God. Okay, I need to emphasize that. Okay, they wanted nothing to do with him. So God gives them exactly what they wanted on earth, an eternity without the benevolent grace of God. Even in hell, sinners are not without God. It's important that you understand that. The difference is that it is now his complete and perfect wrath instead of his mercy. And that's absolutely terrifying. Listen to me. From a theological position, it is true that no man can make themselves right with God. Double predestination is true. Election is true. The sinner's inability to choose God or to make themselves right with God is true. It's all true. But none of that is what we take out into the lost world. Okay? Nobody needs to hear about your reformed Calvinistic theology. Okay? That is not what we take out into the world. That stuff is reserved for more mature believers behind the scenes. What we take out into this lost and dying wicked world is the gospel call. Okay? Are you thirsty? Are you needy? Are you a sinner in need of salvation? Jesus died for sinners. Are you a sinner? Are you? Do you want what Jesus is offering? Okay. Everyone who truly desires to be saved will be saved. Okay. And if right now you are hearing this, if right now you are lost and you do not know God, understand this. You do not have as much time as you think you do. Life is a vapor and soon will be over. Okay. But there is hope. Right now there is hope. Fall on your face before God. Cry out to God and ask for salvation by faith in Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. You will be saved. Your salvation will not fail because God's name, his reputation is riding upon it. He's demonstrating something through you that he has the power to save. That your salvation was his from the beginning. It is his in the middle, and it will be his until the end. 
People say, I praise God for he never gave up on me. He never gave up on you because he never trusted you in the first place. <laughs> this has never been about you. Were you there before the foundations of the earth were laid? Were you the one who chose him? No, he chose you. Before you were born, he worked through generations with your name, knowing when he would bring you here. He let you run as far as he would allow you to run for his own glory so that when he saved you, people would speak of him. And he who began a good work in you will finish it.